Have you ever heard a phrase so much that it starts to lose its meaning? For a long time, for me, that was man's best friend. I had heard the phrase so many times, but I had never really truly believed it until we got a dog ourselves. It then became painfully obvious that this wasn't just a phrase, but an actual fact. Little did I know that my life would change forever when we got Liberty. Not only did we get a dog, but we also got a best friend, a teacher, and most of all, a life changer. In 2006, when my sister turned 10, she begged for a dog for her birthday. Eventually, my parents caved. After a bit of searching, in early May, we went to visit a farmer who had a litter of Border Collie puppies. Katie and I instantly fell in love with one of the female puppies. Instead of the classic Border Collie blaze, about half of her face was white. Fast forward a week later and we were bringing her home, even though she was the dominant female of the litter. Her being the dominant female of the litter brought a fair share of issues, but what puppy is perfect, right? For the next eight years, Liberty and I lived in the same house. We played together, at times, but we weren't very close. She was the dog that was in my house, and I was the human that was in her house. 2016. I graduated high school and I started going to college. I was losing motivation in school and my grades were reflecting that. I had decided to take some time off and just work while trying to figure out what I wanted to do as my career. As time went on, I felt more and more hopeless because I didn't feel like I was making any progress. I was working two part-time jobs, one where I ran into issues with the leadership leading me not to be able to trust anyone there. The second job seemed like it was going great. I was promoted, I was helping train, and I was on call for the other employees. And I was even in charge of a lot of the technical side of the business. But the stress kept building up and eventually I broke. I started not being able to go to the job, doing what they needed me to do, oftentimes leaving them shorthanded at the last minute. Eventually it got so bad that they told me to take some time off and that they would evaluate if I could come back in a couple months. It was then that my depression and anxiety kept me from leaving the house, even some days from leaving my bed. I was too ashamed to talk about it with my parents and I didn't want any help. I perceived it as weak or giving up to ask for help. But in the midst of all this, someone was always around. Liberty was always home, always wanting to play even when I didn't want to. At this point, dad was working, mom was working, and Katie was going to school. I was the only person home during the days, so I was in charge of her. Because of this, we started to do more together. We would go for walks, play catch, run around, wrestle together, play tug of war, and all of her other favorite activities. She gave me a reason for getting up every day. Motivation to get out of bed, to go outside, to do something with what I perceived as the life of a pathetic college dropout. She gave me some sort of purpose every day. It was because of her that I finally saw how much I was hurting my family because of the darkness that I let overtake my life. I finally agreed to get some help. I started going to therapy, something I was afraid of doing, yet it quickly became one of the highlights of my week. But then we got some of the worst news that I could have ever imagined. Liberty was 11, so she wasn't exactly a young pup, but she had always been a healthy dog. But when she developed this cough that just wouldn't go away, we started to get worried. Every time she coughed, it sounded like she was about to throw up as well, with each bout of coughing ending with her gagging, yet nothing ever came out. With no signs of the coughing going away, we finally took her to the vet, who at first couldn't really find anything wrong with Liberty. But towards the end of the appointment, she ended up doing her cough. The vet instantly knew something was wrong, and referred us to Hope, a veterinary specialization hospital. It was there that we found out what Liberty's issue was. She had a big heart. When I heard this for the first time, I almost laughed out loud. The veterinarian was right, she had a big heart. She loved everyone she met. Through her, we shared stories with hundreds of people that we called Life Lessons with Liberty. But unfortunately, this wasn't the type of big heart the veterinarian was talking about. She had developed chronic valvular disease with severe left heart enlargement. Her heart was so enlarged that it was pressing up against her trachea, which is what caused her to cough. The worst part about heart disease in dogs? There is no cure. Liberty's symptoms were far along, so we knew she didn't have much time left. The veterinarian gave us a hopeful estimate of five months, but I could tell by the way he said it that even that was hopeful. I knew my time with Liberty was coming to an end, but I had so much left that I wanted to do with her. She'd become my best friend. It wasn't her time yet. We were supposed to go to the beach and play catch in the sand. We had multiple photo projects to do together. She was the perfect model dog. I didn't want to believe what the veterinarian said, but it was her time. Within two months of her diagnosis, Liberty's health had worsened dramatically. There were times Times when she even struggled to get up. The smallest excitements caused her cough to appear, which was a constant reminder to us about her condition. I vividly remember the day when mom came home from work and told me that she had made the fateful decision to put her to sleep. As much as it hurt to hear that, this odd sense of peace came with it. I knew it was the right thing, for all the times that Liberty had been there to comfort me, to make me feel better, to take my pain away. This was my time to give back to her, to take her pain away. It was the right thing to do. On October 29th, 2017, we went to our vet's office and said our final goodbye to our precious baby girl, the dog who had changed our lives and the lives of people around us. 
But in Liberty's final months, she gave me another gift. I saw the love and care that all the veterinarians had for her, and she wasn't even their dog. They didn't necessarily know the impact that this Border Collie had on her family, but they cared. They wanted to help her, and went to the lengths that they could in order to do so. So when Liberty took her last breaths, she pointed me down a road. I had always loved animals, and they've always loved me. There's some sort of connection that I have with them that I can't explain. And seeing how the veterinarians cared about her and wanted to help us honestly inspired me. I wanted to be able to give back what they had given to us. Fast forward to now, October 29th, 2018. Our family has another little one, Justice, named after her big sister. And here I am, about to finish my first semester of veterinarian technician school. I can't fully express the impact that Liberty had on my life. She was able to help me through what I can easily call the worst years of my life. She pointed me towards a career where I continue to help other animals and people, and hopefully help them have the same connection that I had with Liberty. But I also feel like I will never be able to pay back Liberty everything that she did for me. She was truly my best friend.